I have so many questions all the time about like, how do I play Tracer versus Arisa? How do I play Tracer versus Cast? How do I, do I mark the Tracer? Do I go for the backline? The answer is shut up. Sh you're stupid. Stop asking such dumb questions. Remember, what does the Tracer player do? What does the Tracer player do, chat? What is it? What does the Tracer player do? Regardless of comp, regardless of map, regardless, what does the Tracer player do? Complain, thank you. Short off angle, right. Right, you just shoot. You take it off angle and you shoot. Let's talk about he saying here. Let's actually do the quick he saying rundown. I'm gonna pull up Liquipedia so I'm not distributing any misinformation here. He saying O2 Blast, F Falcon Esports, whatever contenders, go all the way back to Element Mystic and Talon and, and Korean Overwatch contenders. Obviously went to San Francisco Shock, had kind of a mixed performance overall, a bit of a disappointment, uh, despite being relatively hyped up, got released, got picked up by Vancouver Titans later in that season. This was last Overwatch League and actually finished out pretty well. Really helped out Vancouver Titans a lot after the Aspire incident and now is playing for Crazy Raccoon, a team competing in OWCS. Crazy Raccoon obviously being another relatively stacked team as well. Uh, and yeah, so. Echo, let's talk about like what Echo is doing here. So Echo is like, whenever you're playing it in dive mirrors, there's two reasons why you're playing Echo or two things you're looking for. Number one, you're looking for tank pressure because Echo has like the highest poke pressure from a dive hero onto tanks compared to Genji, Tracer, Sombra, and so on. But you still have that assassination opportunity with stickies and beam, especially when it comes to nano, ability to go in deep with copy, a primal rage or a nano monkey assisting you to go in really hard. So you kind of be looking for Echo to be able to set up one of those two things. And the reason why they're playing Echo on this map, and historically we've seen a lot of Echo on this map, is just the fact that the verticality and the high grounds of this map, along with a, a healthy balance of sightlines, creates really just a total playground for Echo to do whatever she wants with. Is you're going to have both Echoes kind of jockeying for this position, poking, 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 fighting for this position, to see which one of them earns the off angle. Because if you're able to win this trade here, then you all of a sudden have a much better sightline or an angle to actually go for backline here. Pokey, 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 transitioning to Winston. A little lazy on the stickies there. I, I wasn't quite sure if he was going for Echo or the Tracer. I don't think he knew either. But yeah, just a lot of poke trades, a lot of poke trades. That was almost really good. Accidentally blocked by Winston Bubble. Well, that would have been really funny. Now, you might be asking, why are we poking on point now? Why am I not rotating here? The problem with this rotation here is it's a bit of an all-in. It still could work if there's a trust of a hard commit from Winston, but because Shu and Shorong are no longer controlling the high ground sightlines, if you go back a little bit here, Shu and Shorong, you see their positions here, they're set up to support this fight for high ground. But then as the point unlocks and as, rota like Shu as fights rotate towards main and then Shu drops, they no longer have an LOS to support he saying supporting an angle like this. If this was a ranked game where there's a little bit less communication, a little bit less coordination, you could probably and probably should go get away with going in for an engage here, going for a full stick, he's going for a beam, and then flying out again. The problem at this level of play is not that flanks are bad, it's just that they have to be coordinated really, really well with your supports, and that might not work out so well. So instead, he is gonna take a much more conservative angle on point. Shoot, 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 control the Winston, control the Winston, and so on. Ends up working out really well because Shu is a bad, 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 bad man. As long as he has LOS of his brig, and he does, that's a little bit risky there, but it's an opportunity. He goes for it, and the stickies are perfect. Like, that that has, there has to be an ASMR equivalent on YouTube of, like, tracking with stickies on a jumping tank. Like, that is just beautiful. How does this comp compare to a ball tracer ash compositions? Uh, this echo tracer on a brig stuff? It's more map situational. Ball Tracer Ash is going to be a lot better in much more broad maps. Uh, more of the escort maps. Stuff like Busan. This is going to feel a lot better with these like cramped vertical maps. Right? Whereas the Ball Tracer Ash are going to have a lot, do a lot better in more open space. You might have more success. You guys particularly playing Ball Tracer Ash on Ilios Ruins, for example. Right? Where instead of Ilios well. Okay. Staging aggressively. Nano Echo. He sees Fly. So Stalker cannot disengage this, and so now he's in. So if you guys ever want to make a Nano Echo work, if you ever have that level of coordination in a team or a ranked environment, whatever you first off, stage aggressively, and then try to find something, look for something that has used a cooldown that prevents them from disengaging. So like right now, this Echo cannot disengage. He misses the stickies, which sucks. Like that should have been a kill. 
But even though he misses the stickies because he's staged so well for the target, he forces a copy in response and still has a little bit of nano to get more value with just poking the brig. So there's the Winston copy, really just a panic copy from Stalker. Probably won't get a lot of value. Yeah, he might not even get the primal there. And you notice that he's still staged aggressively, right? He still has that, uh, he still has that copy. Oh, what a play by Stalker. Okay, I know we're reviewing He Sang here, but look at what Stalker does. Stalker jumps, uses the Winston cooldown to close the distance, and then still has his cooldowns to finish the target. And not only does he do that, but he also animation cancels his beam. Watch this. Primary fire into the beam to get the morale, or the morale, the health threshold <laughs> to the perfect level to where he actually secures the kill. Forces the backline out. And again, now we have a situation where a copy is available. So we're gonna probably see a much more aggressive push here. But they have to be careful of rally. Almost got the back line there. Poke, 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 poke. Takes an angle on Winston. Needs to be careful. Needs to be careful. Goes in super deep. And notice again that this is synchronized. Everything at this level of play is synchronized. There's a nade. There's a commit. Junbin's on the flank. And even though Junbin isn't actually committing at the same time, what Junbin is doing is forcing people to turn around. And that attention is what allows this nade to get as much space as it does. So I'm actually curious. Oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful right there. Backline's MIA, too far away to chase, no shift. So what do we do instead? We just light up the monkey instead. Force the Primal Rage. Now from here, do we keep pressure on the Primal Rage? Yes, we do. Oh my gosh. Absolutely murdered. Okay, three point cap. Ooh, he's overextended. Okay, okay, okay. Now, this, I think they're trying to clean up staggers, but I'm not sure if everyone's on the same page. Okay, they're trying to get there. He doesn't quite get the kill. He's saying there's the copy. There's the tracer copy in response. Drops the pulse bomb. He's saying? He's saying a pretty good tracer. Will he be able to get anything out of it? He's being a little cautious here because if he loses his copy in the middle of the enemy team, he will die. Not terrible copy value. There's the nano in response. They need to light up the monkey. Now, Fielder does something interesting here. Fielder actually nanos the enemy Echo. I would have expected the defensive nano onto Winston. Because Ju Smurf is going to die for that. Cautious, cautious, cautious. He doesn't have cooldowns to match that. There's the stickies. Doesn't quite hit the stickies. Again, always kind of bouncing from cover to cover, right? So, like, he's either, he's either back here or he's here. He's here. He's always hugging a wall at some point in time. I think that's it, guys. Yeah. Well played. Well played. Okay, let's uh, let's keep going here. So again, here, kind of the same question. Like, which side is he saying going to lean to? Left or right? Both have high ground cover, so they're both good angles for Echo. Now, this is risky. This is a little risky. You want to be very careful. Do you guys remember the whole Tracer Sandwich concept where we talked about, like, you don't want to put yourself between threats? He saying goes between threats here. He chases the stalker, but he's turned his butt cheeks to fielder, Chio, and uh, proper. This is pretty risky. This is pretty risky. This is where I think it would be a little bit smarter for He saying. I know he sees this opportunity here, but it might have been better for He saying to just go ahead and rotate and commit to Smurf here. Um, maybe on a conservative angle where like Brigitte and Ana can see him, but he needs to be careful about crossing in the open here. This is a bit of an end. Because if he doesn't get that combo immediately, and even if he does, he could die for that. So he's got to be super cautious. Huge pocket from his backline, though. Is he going to go top right? Yes. Now he's got top right. And then now he has good staging ground to not only poke the Winston, but also has, if he sees an opportunity, he can trade with the Echo as well. Oh my gosh. What does that need? Fielder? I don't even think he was aiming. For, yeah, he wasn't even aiming. That's actually so unfortunate. So Chohan gets smoked. He saying gets smoked. And ultimately, just not enough pressure from He saying that fight. Stickies are used. Poke, 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 poke. Be careful, be careful, be careful. When you get hit with stickies, the big thing in the Echo Mirror is to just try and disengage as quickly as you possibly can because you don't want to be in beam threshold. Proper just destroys Lip, and they're going to reset here. 
Oh, wow. Nice stickies. That was almost a trade there. Poke out the tracer, force the re, then go back to shooting Winston and so on. So, here's the thing. You're going to start to see this leaning towards rotation towards right side. There's a lot of pressure of being stuck here. But as the fights rotate towards point, this high ground becomes more relevant, right? Your job as Echo is you always want to be taking some sort of an off angle with high ground around where the fight's starting. There was a lot of fight happening here. But as the fight rotates this direction, as we start to pressure point, he saying needs to try to rotate to that side. The problem is, is he has to be careful about rotating by himself. Because case in point. You need to be cautious here. This would have been a rotation that probably should have been done a little bit more patiently, right? Maybe either going over the top with on a brig and rotating this way. That probably would have been the safer rotation, but avoiding the tracer entirely. Poke, poke, poke. He's almost got copy now, so he could be a little bit more egotistical with these off angles here. So yeah, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? He's looking for it. He's looking for it. He's looking for it. He's looking for it. There is the nano echo. He needs to copy. He doesn't copy. Oh no. Oh no, it's too far. Dude, the Nano Echo, if you could, if you, if the Echo can't get the copy off, the Nano Echo is brutal. Now, some of you guys are probably asking, why does he not just copy the Winston? It's because the bubble blocks the copy. So he looks back there, but he can't copy the Winston because he can't see the Winston. And even if he could, the bubble would block it. So this is the second time now where he said quite, has not quite staged. I think this situation here, Either you put more emphasis into the monkey, or you rotate this direction faster to create more distance for yourself, or at least stage for a better copy. They got a real problem. They're going to have to go ball to touch. He's got pressure on Winston there. Winston disengages and hides. He's going to ego this, and this is the rotation that we wanted earlier. Much safer, much broader. If you guys haven't noticed, basically three fights here. The first fight, the previous fight, and the fight before that. He's saying either rotating this way, are rotating this way, or rotating this way. He's been putting himself kind of in the middle of fights too often, not really staying on the periphery. He's not choosing his off angle rotations nearly as smoothly as I'd like. Uh, and I think part of that was also occasionally a problem in the first map as well. So yeah, if I had to give a weakness to Heesang, it was some of these mid fight rotations. He looks a little shaky, a little out of position at times. Like even here, right? The best thing for he's saying to do right now is to be honest with you guys, is just to shoot Tracer or shoot Winston. I don't like the necessary greed for going for Ana here. And certainly once you see Ana, you should probably consider rotating back. Uh, instead, he's gonna commit to the angle and turn his back to Ana, and he gets his copy force before he can even let his stickies go. His recall's already used. And again, his Tracer should be good enough to win, maybe? They do have a lot of ultimates here. Nice clip there with Junbin. Poke, 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 poke. Oh, he gets the angle fielder. Can he hit the shots? Oh, no. Oh. Is that it, y'all? I think that might be it. Yeah, that's it. So he's saying struggling with positioning there. Struggling with positioning there. We'll come back to this in a little bit. Okay, let's check out the tracer here. Okay, tracer, off angle, poke, duel the enemy tracer. Look for opportunities to go for backline. You're probably not likely to be able to get a lot of pressure on a Widow just because of the verticality. Um, maybe he is going to go for it, chat. I, I lied. Okay, no, he doesn't want to. He's off angling, off angling, off angling. They're able to quote unquote catch the dive better. One of the disadvantages of playing the Kiri Lusso comp is you're kind of forced to close the distance a little bit or play more aggressive off angles because on a brig do so much damage and so much pressure. So you need to kind of sneakily close the distance. They try to. Uh, Team Blue Raccoon is able to quote unquote catch the disengage, survive it, and then they die. All right. Heesing's job is basically with, with armor packs and on a help to basically just hold this angle and never, ever, 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 ever let the enemy team go through this choke. With the exception if they put like two or three or four resources on it, then he has to give it up. So we actually want to see Heesing go right back. I don't like this position. He needs to go back to that angle. He's actually going to rotate to this side. This is okay. But what I would prefer him to have done is, is maintain here. If the Arisa goes here, then he does the drop, right? Let's the Arisa go through. Okay, then we drop here, and then you off angle here. But yeah, it's a lot of harassment, a lot of distraction. He's going to try to take the high ground. Doesn't do so. Now he's just stalling point for a little bit, trying to save his recall here. 
Shooting, 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 shooting. Now, some of you guys might go, why does he not go for backline here? Why does he not go for backline? Now, if any of you seen any of my recent Tracer videos, we talk a lot about target priority with Tracer. Tracer prefers to go for backline, but the most important thing is just to take an off angle and shoot what you can shoot. Right now, the off angle that Heesing has, it's easiest to shoot Orisa. If he commits to backline here, the problem with committing to backline here is that it's going to cost him his last blink, which means that he can go for like a quick clip and then recall out, and then now he's vulnerable. It's going to cost him resources to set up mid-fight, and that's something that he doesn't want to do. So right now, just shoot Orisa, shoot Orisa, shoot what's close, shoot what's close. If he has the opportunity, now he has a couple of blinks. Now he's going to go for backline. <laughs> we're not going to talk about that pulse bomb. And prop, we're not going to talk about that one either. <laughs> I have so many questions all the time about like, how do I play Tracer versus Orisa? How do I play Tracer versus Cass? How do I play? I'm not almost 45. Screw off Apollify. How do, do I mark the tracer? Do I go for the backline? The answer is shut up. Sh you're stupid. Stop asking such dumb questions. Remember, what does the tracer player do? What does the tracer player do, chat? What is it? What does the tracer player do? Regardless of comp, regardless of map, regardless, what does the tracer player do? Complain. Thank you. Short off angle. Right. Right. You just shoot. You take it off angle and you shoot. So right now, he sings on the off angle. There's nobody freaking here. So what does he saying do? He cried. No. He saying deepens the angle. And then now he's harassing backline. Now I promise you, if Smurf had lost his underpants over here or something and had been running around over here, that you would see he saying shooting Smurf from this off angle. It's not that deep. It literally doesn't matter what they're on. You take the angle and you shoot. So you see this because there's nobody there. The only problem is that the timing of he saying is a little bit off with this Winston. So once he gets forced out, he turns around and goes to the back line, uh, goes for Orisa. Then he goes for the Tracer. Because again, why? Because the Tracer was the closest target there. And now because of that, they've actually choked out the back line's position a little bit here. It's just a shame that um, it wasn't synchronized perfectly. And, and also there seemed to be a little bit of a flub there. Again, why are we shooting Tracer? Because she was there. Why are we shooting Orisa? Because she was there. The problem with focusing tank in your games is not that you guys are focusing the tank. It's that you're probably not taking an angle in focusing tank. If you take an angle in focusing tank, I'm not even mad. The problem with a lot of people is that they don't take an off angle, and then they wonder why I tell them to not focus tank. It has nothing to do necessarily with the target priority. It's the position that you're in. Remember that for like, and if you guys are committing any crimes IRL, always assault people from an angle. They'll never see you coming. Angle, angle, pulsey, pulsey, big pulsey, pulsey. Oh, what a roll. What a roll from proper. This guy's got nerves of steel. You thought for sure that he wouldn't have roll in something he had it. I think that was the roll anyway. Shoot what's close. Shoot what's close. Stay stay on it. Look at that. Look at that. Suzu, TP. Probably didn't even need a recall there. I think he went tried to go back to the high ground with the recall. But yeah, this is this is really good stuff from Houston. I think the lack of recall here might get him in the might get might get him. Yeah, yeah, it gets him. It gets him. Oh, it doesn't get him. Good good pocket. But yeah, the off angle setup stuff. Like, if you guys have seen nothing else here, but the position that this guy is taking is pretty consistently good. Fortify expires. And the kill is there. Also, trigger discipline. Starts the clip. Nope. Duck finds cover. Finishes the clip. Faster than a reload. Again, trigger discipline. Let's just juice this up. Watch it. Reload. Shio. Shoot. Shio's off my screen. Stop. Finish the clip. You guys see it? Even combos it with a melee. Because this guy is actually correct. Oh, wow. Maybe he's not that correct. I spoke too soon. Never mind. We're good. A lot of times when we do our player POVs, we do put in a little bit of an emphasis on some of the mechanical stuff that they do. Maybe some of the cooldown choices that they make. But I hope that you guys are looking at this as at like, like, look at the positioning stuff that has been consistently applied. Constantly, always taking angles. Oh, Genji. Oh, Genji. Oh, bless me, Genji. Let's stay in the tracer. Let's stay in the tracer. We'll come back to the Genji. Shoot, shoot the Genji. Why? Because he's the closest target available. Good. Keep shooting. Keep pressuring. Keep shooting, keep pressuring. Again, target priority is irrelevant. We have Arissa on the angle here. We have Hitscan on the angle here. We have Tracer on the angle here. Do you see it? Constant harassment, constant pressure. Let's actually talk about why is that the case? Why is this so important, guys? Why is pressure from an off angle important? 
Split resources and attention. Okay, great. So when you're shooting from here, you're making people that are here look at your Orisa, look at your Cassidy, and look at you, right? So you're you're just you're you're basically increasing the number of directions that you can be shot and pressured at. Okay, induced anxiety. I mean, unironically, yes. Unironically, yes. All right. Here's another thing too. When you take an off angle, it allows people to not shoot tank. Okay. So we talked about like, but you guys, but, 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 but you just said that it's okay to shoot tank. Yes. Wait for it. When I'm here, the Orisa could choose to push me out, and then I'll shoot the Orisa. But then that means that my Orisa can off angle and shoot backline, or that my Cassidy can off angle and shoot backline. So then if the Orisa goes to pressure my tank, then I have a free angle to the soft succulent underbelly. Right? So if we're all grouped up, then we all just trade on each other's tanks. But as soon as we start to rotate around, we can start to shoot around the tank. And there's one other reason why off angles matter in this instance. There's a lot of reasons, but one of the big reasons here is because off angles are valuable for two of the reasons that we just said. The enemy team wants to be taking off angles too. So what we do is we not only get value of the off angle ourselves, but we stop them from getting those exact same positions. Right? So what we're doing here is we're constantly like, like, look, 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 the, the whole reason, look, look, this is just like a, a tiny little demonstration of why off angles work. Look at Smurf. Smurf goes, oh, Tracer. I got to clear this Tracer out. Looks at Tracer, looks at Orisa, looks at Orisa, looks at Tracer, Judgment Teal is the Javelin, and Smurf goes, whammo, right? Because he doesn't know what's coming. Now, is it the end of the world? No, but it's little things like that times a hundred. Ooh, nice Javelin. Shoot, 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 shoot. He's shooting a fortified Orisa because it's the closest thing. And to get to anything else means using blinks and putting himself off of the off angle. Do you understand it? Shoot the horse if that's what your angle allows you to do. Now, could he sing blink in here and put pressure here? Yes, maybe, maybe, maybe. But that would cost resources, maybe resources that he doesn't want to do. Just keep shooting. And then now they've rotated away. So then now this off angle is totally free. There's nobody freaking here. It's vacant. It's over. It's a Game of Thrones hero uh, fan club now, you know? So just, you're, you're totally fine. Now, that's just a crazy javelin. I'm not gonna lie with you guys. This Smurf is like actually dunking this guy. And he over, look, look at this, look at Smurf. I know we're, we're, this is a Smurf bot review, I think. How does he do that? Okay, anyway. I mean, I could do that. I'm, I'm speaking more for you guys' benefit. So right now, why do you think he saying is not on an off angle right now? And what should he saying do in the next 0.2 seconds? No recall, no blinks, right? But, you see it? You think he's thinking about it, and now he's marking their angle. What's kind of funny is you can actually like butterfly effect this. And the reason that Team Blue right now, Falcons, are on point for free is because Smurf hit the Javelin, which forced Tracer out of the off angle. You got to get what I'm saying? It's kind of like it, one thing leads to another, one thing leads to another, one thing leads to another. You guys get what I'm saying? So, yeah. But that being said, he, he is back on the angle here. He is back on the angle here. Now here, he has to make a choice. So I don't want to shoot a wrist, I'd prefer to shoot backline, but everybody knows what she was doing here. Everybody knows what she was doing here. Right? So he saying has to make a choice. And what he actually tries to do here is he goes across the map to try and pursue the Genji. Now I want you Spilo Spilo Spilites Spilo I Spilo. I want you viewers to tell me why is this a mistake? What concept does this break? from our repertoire of catchphrases and hint it's something that he's saying has already done at least three times in the previous map. What is wrong with this? Clock, Ooh. cheating, sandwich, yes. Clock, cheating, sandwich, yes, 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 yes. 
He has an angle. You need to stay on this angle. Shoot the Orisa, shoot the Brig, or wrap. Either of these are your options. Instead, he sandwiches himself between, he uses resources to go all the way across to the opposite off angle to go for a play. Putting himself at risk, he could just get one shot here. Wasting resources, and not really putting himself in a position to where he's really confident to win this. And now, not only did he run the risk of failing that play, but he's now back on the off angle without any resources. You get what I'm saying? And what's so funny about this is maybe I'm maybe I'm reading way too much into this. But this is something that he's saying has already done. And part of the problem why he was struggling a little bit with Echo on Ilios. If he hits the pulse, would it, would it have been worth? Yes, it would have been worth. The one advantage out of doing this is it is a little bit unpredictable. Stalker's not ready for it. But there is an insane risk out of it. And I would argue that it makes more sense here for to wait out the bat window, hold the angle, shoot, 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 and instead just control the space with pulse bomb here. Because you could don't tell me you can't pulse bomb from this angle too. And also, by the way, look what happens the second that he vacates this angle. You see it? You see it? Lip immediately takes that off angle away. Um, this is kind of scary from He Sing. I don't think he realized that prop. Uh, He Sing. Oh, that is so lucky. It rotates to the opposite angle. Our job here when we an analyze this is to point out all the good and all the bad, right? And there was a lot of good from He's saying right now, but I think that at the very least, it's healthy to question some of those plays and point out where, when and where there's at least risk behind them. Even if it's not necessarily a bad play, there's a lot of risk about going for that. And it's some. And the reason why that's important is something that you guys need to learn from your own gameplay. When you have a powerful angle, hold the off angle and keep applying pressure. This is just another one of those greed plays, right? This is just another one of those greed plays where he really wants that kill. He l vacates the off angle. He does like all this 5D chess, misses the pulse bomb. Now he doesn't have pulse. Now he doesn't have recall. And now he's given the rotation for free again. Do you see it again though? It's literally the exact same thing. It's, it's, uh, it, 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 there is a goof on the, could, the pressure from that off angle. He, he, he gambles and that's it. Gotta fight Stalker in that rotation. Careful, careful. It's a 2v1. Kevster principle. Just live. All right. Find a different angle. Find a different angle. Where is he going to go? Where's Big Daddy going to go here? Where's he going to go? Where's he going to go? Fighting the angle. Fighting the angle. Isolation on Brig. And now notice that he's not even like necessarily forcing the int here. He's just going to, again, go back and control the off angle. Make sure that that Genji can't pincer from behind. And also kill the isolated Genji as well. Okay. Genji. Um, Let's actually talk about the Genji just a wee little bit. Uh, basically what Genji does better than Tracer is Genji is a little bit weaker at controlling short off angles because he's not as self-sufficient as Tracer, right? Like you guys saw like the clinic that he sang put, especially in that last fight there. Genji can do that, not quite as well as Tracer, but what Genji can do is he has a much more powerful turn. Like, when I mean turn, it's a Korean concept. It's not unique to Korea, but it's a, a term that I like. T-U-R-N, turn. And it basically means that there is a cycle of cooldowns where Genji is very strong. And he's very strong for a very powerful couple of seconds. And then he has a weakness. So basically what ends up happening is here is you could, like, let me give you guys a scenario. They take some off angles, they poke, they pressure, they force some CDs. Junman sees an opportunity, goes rampage mode, jumps, slams in the back line, lip to has an angle, Lucio speeds in, Genji dashes in, and like that burst where Genji commits, like there's a dash, there's a right click, you're gonna do more than a tracer. You're gonna do more than a tracer. That brief window of time is where Genji is really special. And I think that's kind of like what they're leaning into with this Kiriko Lucio comp is like, uh, they're gonna find ways to close the distance and then have that brief window where there's like a lot of kill threat. Now the Malga is definitely interesting. 
but yeah. There it is. There it is. We, 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 I promise you I've not seen this map. I promise you I've not seen this map. There's your turn. And not only is it a commit, a 3-2-1, but notice that they're not even grouped up. Why? Because you have to split their attention. Check it out. Lucio speed comes in from two different angles. And blam. And this is and this is such a cool combo, too. The Malga is the one of the reasons behind the Malga might be this right here. It's just one big burst of value. Like the Genji. The Orisa would be a much better consistent sustain pressure. Oh, it's so good. And because it gets the dash reset, the turn extends. You get a better burst for less consistency, exactly. Like this kind of stuff here, this is where a Tracer would be better. A Tracer could be kind of going up here with Lucio and harassing and distracting him. And Genji can't quite do that quite as well. But you guys can see the value of the Genji here. Now he's gonna do, he is going to do this because you need to, again, like Tracer, contest the short off angle setup and stuff, but you're just not quite as good at it. Off angle, off angle, off angle. This is where you kind of want a little bit of a soft contest on high ground, right? Look at this, he might not commit here, but he's gonna scare us. Deflect. Force the roll, force the pocket, do it again. He doesn't have his deflect, so he can't quite do it yet, but he might. And see, look at this. This is the other thing, too. Is it's like the, the Genji thing is the same thing as Tracer. He takes the angle and he shoots what he can shoot. He's going to shoot Cassidy if he can, but he doesn't have his deflect, so he doesn't really want to. So he's going to shoot the tank a little bit from this off angle, like he was doing on Tracer. As soon as he gets close to his deflect, which he has it now, oh, he thought about it. That's actually such a huge shot from proper, because uh, that otherwise he 100% goes for that. Still has his deflect, though. There's the turn. The Malga's going for the commit. Falcons flip the fight. Where is our Genji going to off-angle next? Now, there's a couple of choices here. You could commit here with Blade and beat. You could off-angle here and shoot the Orisa from this off-angle here. You could drop on the Cassie underneath you. He's bailed out by his team, also hard committing. But... There's your turn value. You don't deserve love, exactly. What happens if you lose the duel on the offing when you're forced out? You just go back to your team or stabilize or go back in. You avoid going back to your team if you can. If you can stay on the angle and just kind of and play it safer, you always do that if you can. But sometimes, like let's say like you're like you're a tracer, no recall, and you have no blinks, and they have a tracer and she's gonna chase you. You might need to go back to your team or at least to a health pack. But you try to at least like be in a position. And the reason why that's the case is because you can still kind of be a threat, a soft threat to prevent them from like running down. But the other thing too is it means that it saves you time from having to start all over again. So if like, let's say that, remember when the Cassidy was here, right? Let's go back to this fight again. Oh no, Genji, Cassidy was big brain and poked me out. Shoot. If possible, if let's say Team Red wasn't rotating here. What he's saying would have done if they were all playing here is he would have ducked in here and shot tank for a little bit and kind of played it safe and then waited to, for his HP to come back and then do it again. If Cassidy drops and pushes you, then he's probably going to die. The Cassidy's probably going to die. It's too, way too risky. So you kind of soft give it up, but you don't try to not completely abandon it because then you, you waste all that time. It's a great question. Yeah, exactly, Matt. He was, car he was basically assuming that he was going to get Suzu and beat and they were just going to hard commit him. It was a good fight plan. The layering there of the ultimates was really good. Chill, chill. Fades of the deflect. And now he doesn't even necessarily need to take it off angle. They gotta come to him because they got a touch point. There's the Torbjorn swap. That's kind of funny. Double poke. So normally you guys probably talk to me about like not loving the frontline deflect. This is where team play is slightly different than uh, ranked play. Because if I'm playing Genji and ranked here, I'm probably going to be looking for like a flank, a deep flank to go. But remember we talked about the deep flanks have to be supported. That might not be in their game plan. And because there really isn't another angle that he's saying can play, like he's saying can't play here. It's too far away. It's too isolated. He can't really play here. It's too far. It's too isolated. You just get poked out. It might be okay to go for a frontline deflect to try and farm some value as long as you're not going to hard commit in the next eight seconds. Definitely DPS, yes, mostly. Almost exclusively DPS. Tanks don't really care. Like, even Wrecking Ball gets pretty marginal value out of it. 
That can also allow his Malga to rotate to the next corner, which is fairly useful. But next deflect is really important because you're going to see a beat engage and we'll probably not see a deflect wasted now because they're about to commit. Oh no, John, we get smoked. Yeah, that's unfortunate. And like, for example, here, there's no, they're not likely to waste deflect here because again, we're looking for pre-using our beat blade pretty darn soon here. There's the commit. There's the turn. Here comes the blade. No, they actually don't blade. They actually just kite out four ultimates, <laughs> which is honestly worth the double support ultimate here. This is a really cool layering plan. They cause like, oh, here comes the beat blade. We blow everything. And they just did. And yes, it costs two of their most valuable ultimates, but they still have two. That's terrible from Falcons. Yes, but it's it's hard. It's hard. I think my major problem with Falcons is I think their setup wasn't good. I think they should have had some sort of a split up here, I think, instead. Um, but yeah. But you know me. I, there's always going to be a, a reason to split. But yeah, this is great. This is great. Now he's thinking just chill. Set up from top left. 3, 2, 1, Sojourn ult for space. Now, Sojourn ult first because it's easier to get value from Sojourn ult from range. You make them all kite into here, and then you blade them. Here comes the Malga slam and the blade. And there it is. Malga zones backline. He kills the isolated DPS. And the blade is good. Now, it's a really good trade, actually, there from Smurf. I'm not sure where the support follow-up was there from the rest of Team Red, but the blade itself was good. Early deflect for value, for rotation. We're going to see probably another commit here with Malga ultimate here. And he needs to come fast because before Bap Widow, because Bap Widow can ruin um, Malga ult. Oh, Snipe Stalker. Short off angle. Short off angle, saves his deflect, gets down and dirty with it, and we win this. That's a, that's a cap, ladies and gentlemen. Should be, anyway. Yeah. Yeah, really well done. Yeah, I mean, he's saying played it well. I think there was very little complaints there. The mechanics were good. The strategy was good. The ults were good. Uh, I think the only thing there was, like, questioning some of those, like, quote-unquote sandwiches, right? Like, moving from point A to point B instead of just continuing to hold the angle there. Good stuff. Should Falcons have held high ground there? Maybe. I think Falcons probably needed to have deeper splits, but yeah. Like, I would have preferred Chio to have been with his DPS instead. I don't think Chio needed to be with his Baptiste. I think his Baptiste has more than enough support here. Instead, Chio can kind of try to just uh, basically bash out and avoid the Malg ultimate and then pack from there. But yeah.